Hey guys, welcome to LG Overdrive. This is season four, episode six. I am the host, Kingsman42. With us today, we have UT75. What's going on, everyone? Also with us this week, we have Mackie. What's up, everybody? I just want to say, free my boy, my boy C Train. Free him. Free C Train. One love. Big man C Train there. Uh, double traded in less than, what was it, two weeks? 24 hours? I don't know. Not even 24 hours. Jesus. Um, and he still hasn't made into a new group. Poor kid. Yeah, he was asking all day uh, in the chat about it. Yeah. He was asking. Oh, I haven't even totally. group. Hopefully he gets on a stable team that's a playoff bound team. Otherwise, continue to free C train. Um, hopefully we're gonna have we're still on in a little bit. He's just coming home from some stuff. And unfortunately, Dudley will not be with us this week. I got firm intel that he was kidnapped by the Puerto Ricans, so since for you, hashtag free deadly. <laughs> so. All right. So without further ado, we're gonna just talk about the all-star game again i know i touched on it last week how media was going to talk about it i kind of missed our discussion oh we got a sign there <laughs> um so i do uh i want to touch on it i did miss the discussion last night i know you two is there he kind of touched on it to me earlier and i was, I was talking about it. Night, so we caught most of it but <laughs> <laughs> um from my understanding, what's going on right now is Bryson is currently messaging all the GMs of the AHL, and playoff-bound teams are nominating five uh, players, two forwards, two defensemen, and a goalie. I believe is the correct right, basis. It's 2-2-1. Two, two, and one. Uh, Yeah, yeah, 2-2-1. Two, two, uh, and, and then one of your players also has to be nominated for captain from your team. And then I think there was going to be a public poll, right? Where everybody gets to correct. vote, so, and whoever wins it has to set the three lines and build the team and... Yeah. Yeah. So, from my understanding, it was you picked five guys if you're a playoff team with one captain, and then non-playoff teams picked three guys. So it was one forward, one defenseman, one goalie, and they also had a captain. And then each um, conference would have their captains in a poll in the in the forums, and it would be a community vote to pick the captain for that conference. Um, so it's basically a fan vote at that point to see who would be the GM slash the captain for the conference all-star teams and then those captains would end up going and picking three lines so nine forwards 60 and three goalies to play uh, i believe between week seven and week eight like the starting on the thursday so all-star weekend the end of next week and um, to play the games it's going to be a best of three contest between east versus west um, if you do want more information, I'm sure Bryson's going to talk about it on Weekly News or D uh, Dunks and Dave will talk about it on Ring Talk this week. So or you can go check them out. As much as you want. Just, Just don't be Jay Yeti and not read what Bryson says. Oh, Lord. I trolled Bryson <laughs> right after I heard about that. Man, it was it was great. And uh, he called me, <laughs> called me an asshole. So that was also great. Yeti called you that? No, no, Bryson, because I, uh, I saw somebody I shared so. Yetis to me. Oh, I saw that. Like, oh, it's too long. And I was like, that's great. I'm going to copy and paste that exact same thing and send it to Bryson. <laughs> he was not a fan. <laughs> I know that they should be going out, if not tonight, tomorrow. I know that they were, that it was coming out soon. All the emails. I got I mine. Know, you got yours, so they did go out tonight. I got mine in this afternoon. I was like, where's mine? And then it popped up. So, Yeah. Um, so. Now I'm going to send it over to UT, who I believe has a special message for one of his ex-players. I do. Here you go, Shane Bobain. This is for you. Enjoy your band, Shane Bobain. Never. Let me tell you all you CHL players that are aspiring to be in the AHL. Never mid-game say that you're not going to play defense and then in a chat say, hey, I've done it before. I'm not going to get banned. Because you are going to get banned. So enjoy your three-season ban. Enjoy the off-season. You can get my towels on the way off the ice. All right, bud? You yeah, you fun. know why he did it, though, man? He just wanted out of the Eastern Conference because, as they say, <laughs> he got his far Eastern out. Conference, more like best conference. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. Those yep. ones, guys. I know. That's what I tell him all the time. Uh, but he, he's, he's as far as you can go now and not even playing. Flipping burgers at the, uh, at the burger stand, so. Enjoy it, Shane Bobain. 
I just like how uh, dead certain he was he wouldn't get banned. Yeah, and it's it's funny as everybody like on her she would rip me, and then we beat them last night. Same line, Belial and all those guys. So hey, see what I can do with two defenders. All right, so now we're gonna move on to my segment called From the Point, uh, where I showcase top and bottom defensemen so that they at least get a little bit of a shout out. A couple of familiar names coming out this week. Um, defense with the most points actually was a Toronto defenseman, JC Enterprise. He had eight points this week. Uh, not the most we've seen so far this season from a defenseman, but after six weeks, it's still good for one week. Our we top sniper, we actually had nine defensemen score two goals, so we didn't have a specific uh, sniper. There was nine of them. Uh, for the oh. Defenseman with the most apples... We had two defensemen, JC Enterprise from Toronto and my old friend Salty Sailor from San Jose. They both had seven defense. Um, our best plus minus, this is someone our good friend Zaka will not like to hear, but G Thumbs and Spoofology, a pair of defensemen from Bridgeport, went plus 17 in their 3 0 week. Wow. Our, yeah, they played with Bridgeport's uh, top line. On Sunday night, and they outscored their opponents twenty to two. Wow! Yeah, but I guess seeing into Foley, they're they're really fucking good, man. There's nothing else to say. <laughs> they're, they're both studs. Um, our worst plus minus this week goes to Bobby fifty seven on Milwaukee, who went minus eleven. Um, most hits this week, returning champ for the fourth time or fifth time already. Costa fifty three from Hartford with fi- thirty three hits. I believe he's currently leading the entire AHL in hits as well. Guy is a goon, but I've never seen him miss a hit. He goes forward and he seems to line it up every time. Uh, Tony, you could figure out like how those converted to injuries. Like if you could just find a conversion kit for how many injuries those were. Probably not a lot. I haven't seen like I crush people all the time and they never get injured. It just feels like they're not in the game as frequent anymore. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's not a bad thing though. I'm okay with that. Not like not like seventeen where it was all the you got time. tapped in the corner and you broke yeah. your leg. You'd be an enforcer and a playmaker would hit you and you just have to skate off. Yeah, except now nobody can hit. It's brutal. Yeah. Like I want to play power forward just so I can hit somebody, but the build is so brutal. It doesn't do anything else. Alright. Most giveaways this week is probably the highest I've ever seen from a defenseman all season. I transitions from Binghamton had forty six giveaways in three games this week. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of giveaways. Oh, uh, 15 giveaways a game. I wonder how many of those are in his own zone, because that hurts a team. Imagine yeah. being the goalie playing behind that. Oh, That sounds like the uh, season I three of Milwaukee Admirals that I played for. Mm. I'm talking about giveaways. How many games did Tranny win? Did he win, all, did he win two or one? I, he went 0-2-1. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, most takeaways this week went to King Kaz three from Rochester, who had twenty four takeaways, about eight takeaways a game. Uh, not bad for defenseman there. That's and uh, I'm gonna send it over to UT now for keepers of the crease. Before talking about defensemen, everybody's buddy, Sergachev, where are you, bud? Are you banned again? Because I haven't seen you in a while. So who? Who who is Sergachev? I just, I just is he a shitter? Is he, know he's a I'm player sorry. Of the week? I, I have a question. Yeah. What the hell is a Sergachev? <laughs> I guess it's a player of the week. I guess if if heaven forbid you get player of the week and he lets everybody know, and then chirps you. So he lets everybody know three posts in a row that he's unhappy that the LG forums tagged him and that nobody cared to notice. Yeah. I think he's one of the few people that have actually taken his. He can't like anything or because he just puts everything as dumb. So I'm pretty sure they took away his uh, rights to do that too. <laughs> so. All right. So, yeah, send it over to you, Keepers of the Crease. All right. Hope everybody can hear me better now. Uh, you know, that was a rough uh, few five weeks or four weeks, however long I did it. But uh, we're going to go into our Keepers of the Crease. Our top keeper this week is from – one of our top keepers has been in there before from San Antonio. It's Avalanche Fan 133. He went 3 and 1 this week, posting a 913 save percentage and one goals against average with one shutout. So bravo to you. Um, this one's kind of weird. I'll give him it because he obviously kept his team in it. But Colorado's AG Tomza, he went 1 and 3 this week, but still had a 0.879 uh, 
save percentage with 2.17 goals against average. So he obviously did his part. Just seems like his team couldn't score. Kind of sounds like the Laval Rockets. So I feel your pain. Um, we'll go to our final keepers of the crease. Our final top guardian is going to be from Tucson. Uh, it's not it's not Blindsy. It's Sweet Deek, bro, going 2-1 and one with a point. 870 save percentage, a .97 goals against average, posting one shutout. So he kept it under one goals against for his three games. So impressive. Uh, now everybody's favorite part will go to it's never late, never too late to retire segment. So these are your worst keepers for the week uh, from Texas. No surprise there. Fancy Colt 393092 went 0-2 with a .542 save percentage and 5.55 goals against. So, very be careful, buddy. Might be on the trade block. <laughs> I guess that wouldn't be a as bad thing. Is, as Spaces likes to say, oof. 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 Yeah. Uh, next, <laughs> next, we're going to go to Milwaukee's goalie, Sammy B4398, with one and two with a .612 save percentage and an impressive 6.15 goals against average. So, wow. Um, big oof. Yeah, big oof. Uh, he, his favorite cheese must be Swiss, you know. So next we'll go to uh, Springfield's Days 1983. Went one and two with a .641 save percentage and a point or a 4.67 goals against average. So he, he had a rough week as well. Um, like I said, it's it's we got some new names up on here, new names on the bottom that I really haven't seen. Just it's just it, with aging times, it's just kind of ironic. You know, he only won one game, but still had that good of a save percentage. So. You got to help speaking, them out, Colorado. Got to help them out. Of, yeah, speaking of that, kind of going against the grain there, uh, I'm going to shout out Down Syndrome Dave from Ring Talk. Uh, last week's episode, he was talking about a goalie, as his top goalie, who went 0-0-4. He didn't win a game, but he took his team to overtime four times. Oh, yes, I watched oh, that Ring Talk. I was mentioned a lot on that Ring Talk after that 13-1 loss. So, so. <laughs> shout out to uh, that Springfield goalie a couple of weeks ago who went 0 and 4. That's it. Yeah, that's I did still have, impressive. Uh, it is. I had Dunks and Garris rip me apart uh, in that talk. I think Garris was on that one, was he not? No, it was uh, Dinks? Dings? I don't know. It was Dunks, Down Syndrome Dave, and someone else. But Dinks I did end up. Dings or whatever. Yeah, I did end up beating San Jose this week. So, you know, that's another slap to their face. So, every once in a while, when oh. you can beat a Western team, it's good. All right, so easy. Don't even worry about them. <laughs> I just gotta, I gotta beat uh, Utica at least once this year. Just throw a I third know, line at me, please. I know the week six is going. In. <laughs> oh, Fifty-nine trades and counting. <laughs> Still missing playoffs. Oof. Um. Talking speaking about of trades, trade, yeah, yeah, I got one for you. Uh, Nino, week, Neil, where to next, buddy? Where to next, guys? You should Where be saying that to me, too. Yeah, you too. You, uh, you don't I want to Texas? You might get the call-up. You might get the call-up on, uh, on Iowa. On Iowa. Well, I can't keep track. Between you and yeah. Neil, I don't know who's going to get traded more. Uh, speaking of trades, it is trade deadline this weekend. Um, that's one of Face's favorite subjects. But before we go over to Face's to talk about trade deadline, he does have a sign. Burn, Syracuse, Burn. <laughs> Um, I would like everyone, I'm going to say this, check out Darcy's thread. He's posted a thread called The Quarantine Zone. So when that pops up, go check it out. Um, he's I, I, made sure to, it. I made sure to post read it so it, it, it doesn't have its normal flair. It's good, but he couldn't add the Darcy into it. He had to hold back. So He had to don't hold worry. back a little bit, but he does shout out Helen Keller. So Oh, yeah. And don't oh, worry, yeah. Snowflakes. Don't worry, Snowflakes. Painter, this one's for you, buddy. Okay, this is... <laughs> Trade deadline. Uh, it's obviously your favorite time of the season. It's trading and traping and watching other teams fuck up when you're the number one team in the league. Yeah, um, it's it's something. Uh, there's a lot of teams that are selling right now. It's it's pretty brutal. Uh, uh, selling. Syracuse, Syracuse is having a fire sale. Oh yeah. They're trading for people and then trading those people. That's how bad <laughs> it's getting. Uh, Mises said he's trying to match Syracuse or Texas on the season for trades. Good luck. I don't think there's a record for most trades, Mises. No, I'm pretty sure there is a record, and it's whatever Texas is at right now. Maybe we can give him a big trophy, a trophy for most trades in one season. 
Yeah, it's called Last Place. See you later. <laughs> um, I just want to point out that it's just really hard all the time to look in the cha- uh, the trades thing and always keep seeing shrimp egg wool. <laughs> I'm sorry, Reese. That PSN tag is awful. Hilarious, but awful. So. Reese doesn't really care, let's be honest. All right. Um, so with Syracuse being a fire sale team, do you see any other teams being fire sale teams? Well, Syracuse has made trades. I, I just checked just to be sure. Syracuse has made 10 trades so far this weekend. Throwing that out there. It's literally been open for less than 24 hours. Less than 24 hours. And there's, still, 10. And there's still three days left. Yeah, it's, it's pretty brutal. But no, there's no really other huge trades going on. I mean, Kelly and Johnny went to Laval for fucking a bag of pucks, basically. Um, oh, pain train. Bye. Penn and Penn's Crosby and Matthews, who's awful. awful, we, awful just, we, need to, we need to at least stay in that second place spot, so, you know, it, yeah. it'll help. I think it'll help. And then Manitoba, I don't know if they have another move coming, but they made a very confusing move again with Colorado, who's apparently also a seller, but it's not as big. But they got Pogs and Demon for running Chief and Roman. I don't know if they've played with Pogs before, but he, he's lost out there. We <laughs> traded him off. To, we traded him off Hartford because he was lost in the preseason. Like, hey, I, got, listen, I got on that team. They made me AGM, and I was like, all right, Tater, Pogs is gone. I don't give a fuck. Wasn't he in NHL at one point? Yeah, he was in the NHL this season. He got sent down because I think he had one win up until, like, week four. Sounds, Sounds like, like Undershot. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds like all of uh, Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> well, Montreal. Speaking of Montreal. Waivers, like, come on. Speaking of Montreal, look at the, the forums and we got Super Saiyan already making threads for season 30 GM somebody, and AGM. Somebody, was that you that tagged me in that? No, somebody tagged it me in it. Somebody tagged me. I, but he was saying something about how it's every little French boy's uh, dream to be a rocket and then eventually a Canadian. I'm like, what about the English kids that want to be a Canadian eventually? What is this going to be the new, uh, the new, who is it? Who's the all French team we have in the HL this year? Um, Ontario. Ontario. Ontario, <laughs> yeah. Lapperskin and all those guys. Um, They're all moving to Laval next season. <laughs> um, obviously, Faces, you're a number one team here. Obviously, like number one in the league uh, with trade line. Trade deadline being such a big thing, do you see any teams that are going to be to watch for? Uh, not to toot our own horn, but I traded half our decor at the trade deadline. You did? While having the second least goals against in the league. So we're either going to fall on our face or we're going to keep holding the first. I don't know. I, f- I might I be mean, the dumbest yeah, person. I think you guys already have lock on first, don't you guys? In our division, yeah, we're we literally can't choke. It's impossible to choke for now. Probably true. Uh, like for a second, not like bad. points. Back. Right now, we're we're we literally all decided we're going to play for the the presidents, and if we get it, great. But we know we're going to playoffs in first place in our division. So, now, I'll love them playing Rochester any day. They're fucking horrible. Um, I know. I saw this recently. After three years of winning the pre- or three seasons of winning the presidents in a row, um, fourth lines recipe for success at, success in the AHL into winning a Calder is to scrub hunt. Obviously, you don't do that. You used to do that. You never did much in the playoffs except season twenty six. I think you got to the finals and lost with Wags. Um, Let me tell you, this- I don't want to talk about that. Is this something that you might take into account come playoff time? Some scrub hunting to win? Or are you going to? No. Because obviously I'm... right now you're playing top teams and you're still winning. Yeah, well, that's that's something. Me and Chu, we've been together for two seasons now. I think we can take on whoever. I don't really think it matters who we play against. I think we'll probably come out with a W. And I think our addition to Smitter just makes it better. But... I don't see the point of scrub hunting. Our, our team is so deep that Dax and Ellie are our third line for forwards. I don't think we really need to scrub hunt. I feel like all of our forwards can go out and beat whoever. I think uh, Dax and Ellie went to overtime with Providence's top line this week with C-Train and Wash on defense. So, Yes, I did see that. Um, now, I've noticed that you're wearing your LG 
shirt that Brody sent you. Um, obviously, Brody has your, your address. Are you worried after your breakup with Brody that he might send you something really awful in the mail? I'm worried Brody's going to drive down here and kick my ass for trading, and to be honest with you, I'm waiting for it. Brody just no, where you live. The sign's gone now, Brody, but I miss you. Don't hurt me. <laughs> I know you have my address, but don't use it. Um, Keep in mind that if you hurt thing. me, you're hurting the AHL's goat. <laughs> the AHL goat, according to who? According to the stats. The stats all-time leading scorer in the AHL? Bow down. But how many games played did that take you to get there? Don't worry about it. 40 of them are as goalie. Plug off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we got more for trade deadline. We got, do you see any possible blockbuster moves coming? Do you think there could be one big trade across the league that fucks everything up for everyone or that just throws everyone off, off guard? Uh, I think we saw one of those with MJ going to stock and he, he's not a huge player, but he'll make a, a solid difference there. They didn't really give up too much for him in the way of what they had built. So they kind of traped Syracuse on that front. So seeing what that does to the, to an already stacked division is going to be, it'll be interesting, but I know Syracuse also has seven D right now. So it'll be interesting to see which, which one they move, whether it be Legion or, Soar or Neil, even because they just kind of oh, they're down to six now. I lied. They must have made another trade. They made another trade. Yeah, my phone's not buzzing, usually yeah. it buzzes. <laughs> Let's see what um, they're going to do now. Moving on to shitters of, the, of that shouldn't be on teams. Myself, um, do you see anyone moving their shitters somehow to a top team? It's no, rare, I, but sometimes it happens. Possibly, like you never know, because there's a lot of people who have inflated stats this season, right? So yeah. it's, it's something that can always happen. But at the same time, I feel like if you're a top team right now, you shouldn't really be going off stats. You should probably try and play club with the person first, and not fuck yourself up. Like <laughs> me, the only reason I made those trades with Syracuse is because I went to Smitter, and I was like, "Buddy, you just came from there. Tell me who's good. I will go and get them." So you didn't. I mean, Grizzle went out to nine OT. Butta is a is a G. It's working out. Grizzle's pretty good, yeah. yeah. But no, I don't. Um, I don't see anybody really getting rid of their top players. I mean, I know or getting shitty players at the deadline. It's a stupid move. But I, mean, I know uh, Charlotte might have fucked themselves. They picked up Cat and Canada on waivers. That's interesting. Maybe a bit. <laughs> Now, with trade deadline being now, that means you have three weeks left in the season. Where do you guys think we're going for? Oh, sign. What's the sign say now? Glad is a shitter. Glad is a shitter. Now, I was stuck with two shitters. They got myself, and they've got Glad. So, it'll be interesting to see what Murray and Undershot do there. <laughs> um, yeah, going back to what I was saying, with trade deadline... Being right now it means there's three weeks left. Um, do you guys think that the teams that are currently in the playoff spots are a lock? No. No? Uh, depends Certain on teams. what divisions you're talking about. I think the top five in the Eastern Atlantic won't change. I think Bridgeport might make a push. I think Hershey will fall down, though. Um, Lehigh, even if they do make playoffs, though, they only have like half a roster. So. They literally rely on Nuge. They literally rely on Nuge and a couple of PSN prospects in their training camp, so if they even make playoffs, they're going to get first routed. It doesn't really matter. I think our division's a lock to Eastern North. I don't think Rochester's going to catch Toronto. I don't think they're going to catch Binghampton unless they keep choking. Uh, the Central, it's kind of a free-for-all still, minus Colorado. You guys are, you guys are fucked. See you later. Yeah, between fourth and seventh, eh? The top three are basically a lock, and then after that, it's... Yeah, uh, Manitoba is a lock, Chicago is a lock, Cleveland's a lock. It's basically four to seven now. They're just fighting for fourth. Which is kind of scary, because that's three points between four teams for one Three spot. points between four teams, and they all have the same amount of games left, so it'll be interesting to see who can pull it out. I don't think Rockford will. Unless they make a huge move this deadline, I don't think they have what it takes to go toe-toe with 
Grand Rapids. Oh, I was going to say Iowa or Milwaukee, but even if they make playoffs. Uh, and now the fun division. We have the Pacific. That's wide open from basically well, it's 12 points separate sixth and first, but that's a lot of that's not a lot of points to be honest. No, not with with three weeks left. Uh, Stockton with their their MJ move, they'll probably lock up the division. San Jose, I don't see them falling. Uh, Ontario, it's fuck, it's it's wide open, man. The only people that could really fall out is is Tucson. I think Ontario is going to keep throwing up a lot of W's there. So, be interesting to see who gets in between San Antonio, San Diego, and Tucson. They're very good teams. Especially now that uh, our good old pal Zaka thirty seven uh, blew up his team, and all of a sudden they went eight and one. Yeah, no, that's. <laughs> I don't understand how he does it. I don't know how He's you been train. Bitching, bitching and bitching and bitching since the start of the season about how his team's playing like shit. They can't score. That he has literally one point six goal support per game himself, and he's not having a good season because of it. And then. He he was threatening and threatening and threatening to bomb like blow up the team. Finally, did and they eight and one. Yeah, like I don't. He only made like two trades too, so it's even more impressive that he found out which two pieces had to go and he just tossed them in the gutter. Like he literally only traded Barnsey for Rexify, and I think he has to undo that trade now too because yeah. Barnsey got banned. So that'll that'll hurt them. They have to find a new left winger of rectify skill level which is pretty up there and then they traded Zachary for MTL it's two trades and it turned their team right around all right um before we go since it appears that Risto didn't show up motherfucker does that um, surprise you <laughs> he said he would and then he kept postponing and postponing and postponing he said to go get food he probably fell asleep o'clock. like the last time he said he was going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> Food coma fell asleep. Yeah. Um, so, do you guys have any shoutouts or any signs left? No, oh, that was my one. last one. I got one. Here we go. Oh, UT75, season 30 free agent. A $3 million contract gone. $3 million contract gone after this season. I'll drop $3 um, million on you next season just to show no. No, I'll talk to Super Saiyan. I'll get him to drop three million on you in, in Montreal. He just needs to quit dropping his players down. Yeah, I don't under like is are they doing horrible in the NHL? Because yeah, he they, he cost Laval two wins on Sunday if they had won the game. They didn't, but yeah, it was two wins, yeah. yeah, when he uh, sent somebody down. Yeah, yeah, because he sent down. And he uh, did it. He did it right before the games. Like it got approved right before the game started. Like literally right before. Yeah, it's brutal. Like, and then he traded. He waived ruthless vapor. So either he's trading draft picks to get players, or he's just folded on the season. Because I know they're. I think they're one of the yeah. bottom five teams. They're they're the last. I, I think they have. I can tell you. I think they have like a total four points, and they are second last in the NHL. Yeah, uh-huh. they were last for a while. It took them forever to win their first game. Like. It it sucks when they ask me to play. I'm just like defeated. I was like, I really don't feel feel like playing and just getting let up all game. Shout out to Neji for thinking he's top shit and his team being dead last in the NHL. Yeah. Shout out to the second tags on St. Louis. More like it, am I right? Probably. Shout out, but shout, still out to Sean. shout out to Sean from going to the first place team in the Sharks to the St. Louis Blues. Uh, so we're almost to season three. 30, we've seen a uh, free agent posting. Um, I believe Mackey had a, a bog posting. Oh, buddy. For season 30? Buddy. I, I don't know. Have you seen what Ethan Crass is doing for the CHL? Come on. <laughs> Give that man a bog position. Do it. I don't care what he's done that was scummy in the past. Do give that man a bog position right now. When you think about it, the major shit that Crass did was season 22, 23, 24. That was over two years ago. It wasn't even major shit. It was just he saw loopholes in the rules and he used them. I don't... Yeah. I see what's wrong with yeah. that, but at yeah. the same time... 
If anyone knows the rule book and the loopholes, it is Crass. <laughs> if you want the rule Let's be honest. You should probably just ask Crass and he'll do it. Crass would probably make a really good bog. We just have to be careful on what he would do and what information he would share with his buddies because he is, for the most part, a decent human being. And he likes to expose the problems with the rule book, the problems with the system with the league so that the league can improve it. And a lot of people don't like it. And he has a very can... strong, strong sense of justice. Have you seen the CHL threads? Like, he, he really wants it to be fair, and I, I don't see what's wrong with that. Give the man a box. And then one of his threads, he had to post four times because Zeno kept deleting it, saying, well, too bad, this is the way it is. Well, too bad, this is the way it is. Or, yeah, as, you're not going to get this changed, so too as bad. As a commissioner, this is the way it is. You, really, you really shouldn't be doing that if someone's pointing out a huge breach of the rules, like dropping 25 training camp players like Gatton is doing <laughs> and there's you did see that. Yes. messages where they say they have to empty their training camps for random assignments you should probably yeah. step in I don't know why they haven't yet but it's it's been, uh, it's, it's been a fun couple weeks reading in the CHL forums between Crass and a couple other guys just exposing and they're being Pages upon pages with hundreds of replies now and thousands and thousands of views on those threads. Yeah, every, every, every day I log on to LG, I have more likes on my posts and those threads. I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All I did was say Krause was right. God damn, okay. It's, that's literally it. And then you back them up or you back someone else up that has a point that's the same idealistic. It's a ton of likes. And then there's always the same few people that are just liking it, writing it get good or dumb because they're on the side that crashes money out of Most of those people are on Gatineau. I think one of the biggest people that are all over that thread is Lady Redbush, who's on Gatineau. Lady so. Redbush, Pastor, who also yeah. runs SNP. Yeah, I work for them. <laughs> so. Um, so, shout out to Crass and possible, hopefully, run for Bog season 30. He's been running for Bog every season since, like, 27, so... I don't even like Kras. I still think he should get it. He'd be great for the position. He give the man a chance. I think he. I think it can't really hurt the league. Like his friends are not managers anymore, so I don't really think it matters. Dude, and if he did do such a bad job, do the same thing they did with Dunks. Let him go. <laughs> I don't even know what happened there. Man, I just logged on and Dunks. Dunks was platinum. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, without further ado, guys, uh, thanks for coming on, Mackie. It's nice to see you after such a long hiatus on the show. Uh, well, you didn't do it on a Saturday night, so. <laughs> Thursdays seem to be a thing, so maybe we should bring you on more often. Uh, I don't know, man. They, You know, they removed Thursday because of my poor availability. I'll have to <laughs> get back to you. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll catch you guys next week, uh, episode 7. Mackie has a last sign for us. Chip, chip. Back to Utica season 30 at Bolly Jones. Just saying right. for, agent, for agent of her, Mackie. You can get me for cheap. I'm just saying I have two goals. Go away. <laughs> All right. And we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. It's a penalty shot. Strength versus strength. Shoot. Score! Shatker's body position. Okay, back. Moving it to Wheeler. The Rangers wheel one ahead up the wing. And Pons Wilson couldn't get through the roadblock. Bailey's in his own end, heading towards center. He knifed it away. Snapping a pass to Wheeler. Outlet up the middle to Pavel Burry. Score! Pavel Burry! Shoot! What control! Skates out with it. Big drive! He hit the post! Goal!